and now your Xbox has been soft modded successfully. Hey everyone, Michael Crump back here yet again with another video teaching you all about console hacking, tips and tricks, and just ways to get more out of your different types of consoles. Today, what I'm going to be talking about is I'm going to talk about soft modding your original Xbox. So this is going to open up things such as like homebrew, be able to play your games uh, via backups and a lot more. Now, before I start today, the first thing I wanted to show you was some of my original equipment. So here is this very large Xbox controller. I don't think most people are familiar with this one, but this was one of the first ones that came out, just large in general. And you can kind of compare that right now with, you know, the Halo edition, which this controller came with this actual Xbox, which we're gonna talk about in just a second. So you can see the size differences uh, between the two. The second thing I wanted to call out here is, is that back in the day, what we did was we used mod chips to mod our Xbox devices. So this is the Halo Special Edition console. And with this machine, what I actually did was I installed a mod chip. Now the mod chip that was installed was one by Team Executor. And I believe this may be a V3. And as you can see, there was a couple of different add-ons for the hardware that you would use here. So you could do things such as like switch, which firmware that you're currently loaded into. And there was a couple of other adjustments as well. And you did get the LED light uh, that came on as soon as you had booted your machine. Now this required opening the box. This also required buying a mod chip and then putting it all together. And then obviously you would be able to use this to run game backups, homebrew and more. So let's fast forward to where we're at now today. So where we're at today. So this is another original Xbox that also came out. Obviously this one came out before the Halo Special Edition. And this console was given to me as well as some accessories. So I want to mod this console using a software method. Now, there are a couple of things that you will need. One of them being a cable that looks just like this right here. So this end right here goes into the Xbox, as you can see here. And this other end is a USB. So if you have something like a USB drive, for example, you can plug this in and this will act as an actual memory card. Now, while this sounds simple enough, it's actually quite uh, cumbersome, mainly because these USB drives, you have to have a very specific USB drive. So this one didn't work. This one also didn't work. An eight gigabyte here didn't work. I think this one may be a 16 gigabyte. And then obviously a 32 gigabyte didn't work. So why am I saying all of that? I'm saying that if you're going to get a USB drive and particularly one that works, you're gonna to wanna to get something around in the 256 megabyte or in the 512 megabyte range. Now there are kits that are sold on things such as eBay that makes it a little bit easier. But if you find a drive that is at least 512 megabytes or lower, for the most part that they work, I was unable to get one of those drives. So I came up with another solution. I looked at the compatibility list and what I found was, was that you can use a PlayStation portable in order to connect up 
and get this exploit to work, which is what I used. So if you look right here on the menu, you'll see there is a USB connection. So you just want to hit X on that and it says connect a USB cable. In this instance, what you'll be doing is you'll be plugging that into this cable, which again goes directly into your Xbox machine. And then you're going to need to copy over some files to this PlayStation Portable memory stick. And the last thing that you're gonna need is gonna be a game like Splinter Cell. Now, I pick Splinter Cell for a number of different reasons. Um, number one is, is that this is the game that is the absolute most easiest game in order to run a save game, which will exploit the system. There are a couple of others that I'll list above me of games that are compatible as well, but you want to pick up a copy of Splinter Cell and it does have to be an original copy. I picked this one up at a flea market. I believe I paid right around $5 for it. You can find these in a couple of uh, like thrift stores and so forth, uh, or you can obviously buy one of these on eBay. So if you can, make sure you use something right around the four uh, gigabyte space when you're using a PSP. I did find, again, one that ships with it. I think it's typically around the four gigabyte memory space. But you can use this and you can actually hack your Xbox with a PlayStation Portable. Now, is that cool or what? Okay, I've tried to make things a bit easier here. If you go to github.com slash mbcrump slash ogxbox, you're going to see there is a couple of RAR files as well as some zip files in here. What I want you to do is just go ahead and click on each and every one of these and hit that download button. So we're in the Explorer 360, hit the download, and then the very last one here is going to be this DLL, and we're gonna hit the download button on that. Now, if you were using a PlayStation Portable, now is the time to go ahead and make a backup of all of those files. So I've selected all of mine here, and now I'm just pasting them to another directory on my hard drive. Okay, while that's still in progress, go ahead and switch over to where you downloaded these zip files as well as the RAR file and start extracting them. So I'm just right clicking here and I'm just doing a extract to. So all four of these will be in a separate folder ready for you to come back in and to begin working with them. So let's go ahead and navigate to the msvcr71 file. There is a DLL that's in here. Just right click it and then go to copy. Go ahead and navigate back a directory. We're gonna to go to the Explorer 360 and we're just gonna paste that inside of this folder. Now head over to the USB FAT X formatter and run the executable that is in that folder. You will need to use administrator. Okay, so our files are just about copied over from our PSP. So that means we're gonna be able to format this memory card that's inside the PlayStation Portable. Okay, make sure you do have the right device selected. And I'd hit format USB. And now that has been formatted and you should close completely out of this and then just go ahead and run this as administrator again. Okay, make sure you have the right device selected. And this time just click on the quick format USB. Okay. Now back in our main directory here, go ahead and click on the Xbox soft modding tool, then soft mod package. And you're going to see a couple of zip files here. So the first one, you're just going to extract soft mod save. And then for the next zip, this is the Splinter Cell North American. 
save game. So I just went ahead and extracted that. If you double click into one of these folders, you'll see this U data and these numbers that start with such as like a two. So if we go back into Explorer 360 and we go to run as administrator here, Okay, and now you're gonna go open and you're gonna select a memory device and then you should see partition here. If you don't, that means there's a problem. Now I am copying and pasting this folder here. It will start with a number and this, for example, is the actual exploit that's going to be used. In just a moment, we're going to copy over our splinter cell save game data that we're gonna be able to inject once we run the game disk. So here is the splinter cell. We're going into U data. And then again, this one will go super fast because it's just a small save game file. Go ahead now and you can navigate through the directories if you'd like to just double check. Sometimes I close and reopen the memory card from the data menu. And once all of that is complete and you're happy, just go ahead and close out of it. And then just make sure you eject the disk properly. It only takes a second. Okay, so now we have all of our files copied over to our PlayStation Portable. Again, let's just make sure that you go ahead and you plug your cable back into your Xbox that will produce a memory card. Okay, and before we start here, just one quick thing to note, and that is you should have already connected your Xbox to your memory card using the adapter that I mentioned earlier. Once that is said and done, now you can come in here and you can click where it says memory, and you should see a new memory card. So scroll down, you'll see Xbox soft mod, and you're just going to copy that to your hard disk. One of the key things uh, to note here is that once you find the save game file, just make sure that you use the right directional pad to actually select the save. So we'll go splinter cell, and now I'm navigating into the save and now I'm going copy. And again, I'm just going to copy this to my Xbox hard disk. So I'm now at the point to where I can take my splinter cell disk and go ahead and insert that into my Xbox. And there we go. It's starting to boot up properly. And we're just going to try to skip as many of these movies that we can and get into the game. Okay, go to start game and go to the one that says Linux and then checkpoints and then hit A and here you go. Okay, so this is just some in instructional information just press the A button and it will extract those that save game file that we copied over just a few moments ago. Okay, there's a couple of prompts that it has in here. You're just going to select I understand or okay for all of those prompts and make sure you take your game disk out before this fully loads and then you should see the following screen here. And now your Xbox has been soft modded successfully. Now there's a ton of options in here, which I'm not going to cover in this video, but I will be making another video where I do cover those. 
what we're going to do is we're going to take one of my favorite games, which is NFL Fever 2003. Oh yes, you saw Peyton Manning on the front. And I am going to copy this to the hard disk. Okay, so you should see down at the bottom, it says Trey in it. And in just a moment, it will recognize that I do have NFL Fever 2003 in the tray. Once it shows that, let's go down to system and then copy disk to hard disk drive. Now at this point, it will copy that entire game disk over to our hard disk. And you might be thinking to yourself, okay, well, the hard disk that ships with the Xbox consoles was very small. I would like to get a much larger one in there. And I would do, and I would agree with that. We won't be covering that again in this tutorial, but at least this will show you the process of backing up a disk to your hard disk drive. Okay, and once it finishes with that, here you can see I took the disk back out. It says the tray is open down at the very bottom. And there is my disk. And I'm going to go to games and I'm going to go NFL Fever. And we will launch the game now. Okay, there it goes. NFL Fever 2003 is loading. Loading successfully. And there is my game disc. So I have preserved my disc and I have installed this game in the game data files over to the hard disk drive. Okay, so it wouldn't be a good video if I didn't at least attempt to make a touchdown here. So here are the rules. I get one pass for one touchdown and if we make it, then I win. Let's represent for Seattle. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's pick a deep strike play here. And ready, set, hut. All right, I like X. Stevens. Stevens. He could go all the way. 95 yards, 38 seconds. So thank you so very much for watching. I greatly appreciate each and every one of you. If you can, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and leave a comment down below. I've looked at the stats of the channel, we're growing tremendously, and I thank all of you for all of your help with doing that. Until the next time, Michael out.